Hey guys, I don't know if you heard, but about a week or so ago, there was a brand new camera announced and this thing is gonna change my life. It's gonna make me more excited about photography. It's gonna make me shoot more. It's gonna really, really uh, take my style to the next level. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Here it is. I have it here for you guys. The Polaroid. So I'm being a little bit funny, of course, but um, I did just order this camera and I got very excited about it and there has been a lot of camera releases lately. And um, I think what is interesting about this, uh, and this is actually a statement and a conversation that's been going on for a long time, well before digital, well before all these features, where uh, photographers would, would get uh, upset uh, when somebody would say like, you have a nice camera or whatever, and they always come back with the, it's not the camera, it's the photographer. And okay, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's true on a lot of levels, right? If you don't have a good eye, if you don't kind of know what to capture, the moments to capture, or you've built up skill to be able to, to realize like, you know, how to use light and stuff, you're not gonna be able to, to, to get uh, consistently great photos, right? But does the camera do nothing? I mean, is it just a box like we want to say? I'm not 100% sure because I think that, um, you know, features, megapixels, all of this stuff aside, for me, and this is, goes back even in the film days when I first started, each camera uh, has a certain personality, right? Like you would know if you watch anything else I do, I use a lot of different cameras, right? I'm not a blah, blah, blah guy. I mean, I have named the, the brand, I pretty much have one, um, or have used one in the past uh, to a decent extent. Um, and that I think has made me really versatile. This is also true of, of lighting and stuff, which is kind of how I ended up where I was. I didn't just always use, let's say, Profoto, which is the main lighting I'm, I've used now. I've, I've, I've fucking used it all. Speedatron, Novatron, Megatron, whatever. I mean, I've used every kind of lighting you could possibly think of, right? So in the end, uh, you know, I settled upon the lighting that, that makes me the most comfortable and gives me the most options, but that doesn't mean that occasionally I don't pull out something else, right? And I think that's actually the thing, right? So basically I've got a camera, let's say, that I use in my main camera. It's some kind of a, you know, a, a mirrorless or a DSLR, and it's doing all the things I need it to do. And then I want to do a certain uh, a look or effect, right? So I can go in Photoshop and do it. So this is like the, the, the advance of, of modern photography, the, the digital world, right? So we can basically just go out and just capture whatever we see and then make all those other decisions later. But, if you use certain cameras for certain things, it definitely makes you rethink how you're gonna go out and shoot. So um, I thought I'd talk about a few cameras that I like and that I use and that I'm gonna use and reasons why, and maybe we can have a little discussion about like what you guys use that might be odd or different, or maybe you don't, maybe you don't believe it at all. Maybe you just buy the brand newest camera and you do everything in post. So I've probably mentioned this a thousand times, one of my favorite cameras I've ever owned and I still own and I keep it to this day, even though it's quite old, I'm gonna squat down and get it, is this. This is the Leica M8. This was, uh, it's a rangefinder, if you guys don't know. This was their first digital rangefinder. It is, uh, when it first came out, um, it got blasted on a lot of levels. Um, for, uh, notably, the, they did something with the sensor to make it like sharper or do whatever they do to make it high tech and better. And it ended up that uh, certain um, colors, but certain types of fabrics that were black would reflect strangely and you'd get color cast. So. They quickly came out with a filter that you could put in front of your lens to take care of that, which, you know, okay, it solved the problem. And I think they gave you one filter if you had bought the camera. Uh, additional filters were like $300. So it was definitely an issue. And uh, it didn't affect black and white, you know, uh, it was a color thing. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of other issues with this camera. But what's great about it is, is that number one, like I said, it's a rangefinder. So if you don't know what a rangefinder is, um, Rangefinder is like your original mirrorless cameras, right? There's no, no mirror, right? No mirror box, you're looking through the top here. And there's certain advantages to the sharpness of the lenses and blah, blah, all the other stuff that you get like with the touting now with mirrorless cameras. Uh, but what I like about it is because you're not looking through the lens, um, and I have kind of crappy vision, you might notice with the glasses, um, you focus by moving basically two images together and when they become one image, it's sharp. For me, and the way I shoot, I can actually do that much faster and much better than I can just turning a focus ring until something looks sharp to my eye. Um, I've learned that a while back with film cameras and when like I came out with the digital, I was like, oh hell yeah. So there's certain disadvantages, right? You're not looking through the lens, which means that you don't see depth of field, right? You don't see exact uh, composition. You can't get super close to things because obviously you're looking up here, you start getting close, it throws off uh, the, what they call parallax. 
So there's tons of problems with this camera. Problems, right? It's not the most perfect thing in the world. However, it's also old. This is pretty old, like a, however, 16-bit color. I love the files that come out of this camera. And when I pick it up, it's heavy and it's rugged and I've had it for a long time. And when I pick up this camera, it makes me shoot differently than when I pick up, let's say, my 1DX Mark II, right? It's a different camera. It feels different in my hands. I shoot differently when I have it. Now, if you're just doing kind of work, this happens a lot in advertising, where you're just kind of shooting to a, a layout and you're just doing what you got to do, right? You're not putting like your creative oomph into it necessarily uh, in the actual photo, then maybe it doesn't matter as much, right? Any camera on a tripod that's lined up right, that's plugged in, is going to give you whatever. I mean, color palettes and stuff are different. But when I'm just shooting, right, I use this a lot. I think I mentioned this before, I use it a lot for headshots. Um, it's super small. I can just pull it out. It's really casual. It doesn't make people feel intimidated like the, the Canon does. I can walk around the street with it. It's pretty low key. Um, and I just really like it. You know, I, I think it's a great camera. It changes the way I shoot. I use it for a bunch of stuff. I don't use it for everything, right? Um, I did at one point attempt to only use the Leica for everything, um, but I found that sometimes I need macro or sometimes I need to be able to shoot faster or whatever. So super long lenses. Um, these things aren't available for it. So for that, I have a DSLR, right? Another thing is a lot of these new cameras are allowing, which is fantastic actually, a digital, different uh, ways of shooting. And this is especially useful in mirrorless because you can, let's say, shoot to 16.9 or you can shoot square or you can whatever. But back in the film days, I'm about to pull out a film camera, um, certain cameras shot different formats, right? So this is also another one of my favorite cameras. This is a Roloflex, right? This happens to be a Roly T. Uh, Roly snobs out there are gonna tell me that the, the, the Planar is better. And while I do like the Planar lens design, I love the Tessar, which is why it's called a T design because it is, oh my God, this is gonna blow people away. It's a little bit softer. So I like it for portraits. So this is the twin lens camera. When you use a camera like this, if you don't know, you're looking through the top of it like this. You're looking through this top lens. The, you're actually photographing with the bottom lens. Um, it has a lot of advantages of like the Leica in the sense the lens is closer to the, the film plane, so it's sharper. Um, there's no blackout. In other words, you can actually see when you take the shot because you're not looking through this lens. Um, but of course, you're not looking through the lens, right? So if your finger's in front of it, you're not gonna see that. Um, this camera shoots square, right? It is square. When you look through, it's square. There's no not shooting square. I mean, I guess you could crop it later, but I use this camera because I want to shoot square. Now, back in the day when square cameras were the thing, right, people shot with them for versatility because they could shoot, you know, they didn't have to think horizontal or vertical. They could just kind of shoot square and then crop it. Um, but nowadays where that's not really the deal, uh, people, I think, pick up square cameras because the fact that they're square, right? Has it, it makes you format, it makes you a crop it makes you think differently when you're shooting a square picture right so when i'm shooting with this camera i get different results than i get with the leica in fact when i'm shooting a lot of times it's personal stuff especially or portraits or whatever i will have several cameras out you know i will have a roloflex i might have my leica i might have you know i might even have the canon or a hasselblad or whatever out because each of these cameras has a little bit of a different feel and i grab them for different reasons I love my little uh, Fuji 100 because that can focus really close. It's got a super small lens. It's tiny. I can hold it like this and do weird things with it. I use that a lot too. I don't use it all the time. If somebody's asking me for a standard kind of portrait, I don't bust out that camera because it's got a pretty wide angle lens and you know I'm going to have to stand back uh, too far to not have weird compression issues. Um, so it's not the, the, the camera I choose for standard kind of portraits, right? It's more like an environmental portrait camera or something, a grab shot camera or something where I want to get really intimate with somebody and I don't care about the distortion, right? So that I grab for that. So if you were to look in my camera bag, you know, at any one moment, I often have three or four different cameras in there because I'm using each camera for a different thing. Now, again, this doesn't have to be the way, right? You could just buy two of the same camera. So you have a backup, of course, and just set the camera. I'm going to, you know, go and post and crop it to square or even set it inside some of the mirrorless cameras. But when I pick up my Canon, even if it could shoot square, it still feels like my Canon to me. And to me, anyways, and I think a lot of photographers, um, it, it changes the way you shoot. It really does. It doesn't make you a better photographer to shoot with different cameras, but it makes you a different photographer. And also people like to try new stuff, right? I mean, so when you have something new in your hands, it's fresh, you're trying it out. Um, you know, so I bought this Polaroid camera, as I started off saying, and the reason why I did is I have a bunch of Polaroid cameras and um, I love Polaroid. If I go all the way back to the start, my very first camera was a Polaroid. I'm like addicted to instant film. It was such a, a 
a miracle to like be able to see the images immediately. I know with digital that sounds so silly, but you know, if you had started out with film and you had to send the film away or you had a dark room or whatever, to know that this thing popped out of the camera and just processed right in front of you, it's magic, you know? And it's still magic. It's more magic now in a sense, right? Because every model that walks into my studio is on Snapchat or whatever and they're sending pictures and they're doing whatever they're gonna do, Instagram. And, but when a Polaroid pops out, they're excited to see it develop because it's something different. So that changes the shoot, right? Um, okay, I only have eight pictures. Okay, we gotta do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna shoot, okay, now we're gonna wait three minutes and wait for it, you know, to see what happens, you know, what is it gonna look like? So that changes the way I shoot. That changes the way the models perceive the shoot, the, the, the subject, whether they be a, you know, a senior portrait or a corporate portrait or a model or whatever it is, whatever you're shooting, right? It's gonna change it. If I bust out my four x five camera and I shoot a portrait of you, you're gonna react and act and, and, and be much different than you are if I take out my Canon. And yes, I can take the Canon, throw it on a tripod, you know, kind of work in a slower pace like the four x five, but it's never really gonna be the same, right? Because that camera does change the shot. And there you go. I mean, that's my philosophy. It's always been my philosophy. When people used to say it all the time before to me, I would say, well, to me, it does change. And that's why you don't see in my bag multiples of the same camera, usually. Uh, when I used to shoot um, strictly commercial stuff, I would have a backup, of course, um, usually the previous generation of my medium format camera. And when I shot 35, I would have four or five bodies that were the same because that was more like having film backs. Like those cameras were commercial purposes. They were just to get the job done. You know, nowadays we have digital, you know when you take the picture if the camera's broken, so you can immediately switch to your second camera so you only need two. Um, so, but I think these other cameras, these peripheral cameras, you know, they're, they're so interesting, right? Even, uh, you know, some people take an old camera and turn it into a, an infrared sensitive camera and that kind of stuff. You know, again, when you pick that up, it's gonna change the way you shoot. Um, sometimes for better or worse, you know, other times, like I would say is like, I have it in my pocket here. Um, this is uh, the Ricoh Theta. This is a 360 camera, right? So 360 is relatively new, uh, you know, technology, relatively, um, especially compared to the Rolleiflex. Um, I love this camera. I carry around a bunch. You probably haven't seen maybe more than a dozen pictures that I post with this because it's so specialized that in the end, I don't always get something that is viable with the rest of my work. But does that mean I don't use it? No, in fact, I take it out and I try fun things with it and we do different things. Um, uh, hopefully I'll get better at it. Um, I want to try to do some live streams with it. You know, I want to mess around because technology is awesome, you know. And if you have a camera that can do different things, whether it be an, an old camera or a new camera, and it changes how you have to operate, it makes you think, right? That's going to change how you shoot. If you always have, if you're a photographer and you walk around and you've got a, a, a nice zoom lens, let's say a 70 to 200 zoom, and you're always walking around with it and you, you love it and you shoot your portraits with it and do whatever, and then I say, here, put that away for a month and shoot with this 50. That's gonna change the way you shoot, right? It is gonna make a difference. Yeah, a good photographer can make a picture with any camera. Yeah, but it's gonna be a different picture if you're using different cameras. So I'm curious what you guys think about this. Uh, do you think that I'm full of shit right now and that the camera doesn't make a difference and it's all exactly the same? Or does the camera change the way you shoot? Do you have different cameras that you use for different things? Or, or when you've gotten new cameras, you start changing the way you work? You know, what do you guys think? I mean, uh, I know I just made a video saying don't chase technology, but I'm, I'm not exactly saying that here. I think what I'm saying is trying different things will change the way you operate. And that's true of cameras, uh, which is what I'm talking about here. It's true of lighting. It's true of anything that you're doing photographically. You start changing the way you work, it will change the way you shoot. If you challenge yourself to do something different, it will change your photography. That's how we get better. That's how we get, uh, you know, more advanced. And it also it fills our toolkit so that when the time comes that somebody wants something or you want to create something special, you'll remember, man, remember when I shot with that camera or used that light piece of lighting or did this lens filter or whatever? That was pretty cool. That's perfect for this. And you have it there right? And you can make the shot there on the spot. And you're being a photographer and you're not just going and doing it in post. You don't know, have there's anything wrong with that. Uh, a lot of people are great. I'm, I'm terrible at uh, computer stuff. So for me, and I don't really enjoy it. Uh, but you know, if your work is, even if your work is all done in post or all done in post, you know, even just knowing, hey, what, I'm going to do this and this and this. So I need this, uh, this camera's better for it because it does this, it has more dynamic range, let's say, or this one's better for it because it has, you know, more, uh, you know, small sensor. So I get more depth of field because I stand back further. 
you know, things like that. These, these can all be uh, factors in everything that you do. So, yeah, I think in the end, I mean, if I had to check off, does the camera make a difference? Yeah, I think it does. And let me know what you think. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you guys will uh, see when I have new stuff coming out. Um, also, uh, I'm, I'm trying to put more stuff on Instagram. So if you've been a follower of me there, uh, thanks for sticking with me. I'll, I'll try to post more regularly. Um, I think I'm too big of, big of a crit critic of myself, but uh, I'm going to start filling up my Instagram uh, feed with more images so we can actually discuss them. So uh, yeah, guys, let me know what you think if you want to see anything new on this channel. And uh, I'll see you next time.